We're here with Scott Goodwin with BDOutdoors.com, and uh, we want to just talk a little bit about the fishing in the area here in uh, Port Canaveral. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Port Canaveral is where the water is, where you can get to the ocean, and then Cocoa Beach is here. This is Merritt Island where we're sitting now. And then Coco itself is on the mainland, but it's all within 10 miles of each other. So. And we're sitting on your brand new boat. Yes, it's only not. been put in the water one time. We are anxiously awaiting. Ooh, yeah, just <laughs> touching it. My boat's not really this nice. Well, it's, uh, this one will get there, I guess, in time. If someone was to come down to Canaveral area and they wanted to go fishing, where should they start if they've never been in the area? Right. Well, we have a, a very wide array of options. You can you can saltwater flats fish, which is super popular in the Indian and Banana River, or right here, just north of us is Mosquito Lagoon, which is famous for redfish and trout and black drum and black drum are biting pretty well right now. And that's all right here. And then a little bit to the east of us is Port Canaveral itself, which is the basin where you can head out into the ocean. It is connected to the rivers, but there's a set of locks you have to go through, and so it's not, you know, free-flowing. In offshore fishing, we have a coastal fishery. Depends on the time of year, but say within the first 10 miles is cobia fishing, tarpon fishing in the summer for big tarpon. Triple tail fishing is pretty, pretty famous around mm -hmm. the port. Big reds, sharks, that's all popular along the coast. And then from say 12 to 30 miles, at 30 miles you're in the Gulf Stream, or starting to be in it. That's your traditional offshore fishing, yeah. bottom fishing, grouper snappers are really good. Red snappers are, you know, unbelievably good since you can't <laughs> keep them. Yeah. Sometimes you can't fish through them. And then trolling for dolphin, wahoo, sailfish, tunas, blackfin tunas. That's all within the first out to say 35 miles. We mm -hmm. do have deep dropping for golden tiles yellow edge and snowy groupers yep. that's uh in like six to thousand six hundred so very thousand. very similar species to what we get down in the keys exactly. you just go gotta go a little further a little off further from. yeah and the water's not as clear so in a lot of our fisheries we don't have to be quite as stealthy as you might have to be in shallower cleaner water so our water like in liter size oh and yeah like that yeah yeah our fish are smart down in the keys because <laughs> yeah, exactly. they're in an See aquarium too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So some days our fish are like that, um, but most of the time we can we can get away with heavier terminal tackle. May not have to use fluorocarbon for certain fish. Some we still do, just depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. And then beyond the Gulf Stream, if you run 50 miles through the Gulf Stream and get to the other side, that's a fishery that everybody terms the other side, and that's a yellowfin tuna fishery. But it's all radar fishing. It's very specialized. You run and run and run, and you have to have a powerful radar to mark the birds that are feeding over the tunas. And so then you pull wow. in and fish them. And that's anywhere. You start looking around 70 miles when you pop out of the stream, and you might be 120. Dang, uh, that's something I've just, never done. Yeah, it's awesome. It, it's awesome when you find them. If not, it's, it can be a 100-mile boat ride. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, but you usually can find something. Uh, the birds are almost always on tunas, but if you find something floating because you're covering so much ground, the odds go up. You can find a weed line on the edge, and so that, that's when you might catch dolphin and wahoo and things like that. And there are some blue marlin caught uh, around the tunas, but now the tunas have gotten smart, and we do have to use light leaders compared to the old days. So most of the marlin that you hook, you chafe off because you're using like 80 pound tests. In okay. the old days, we used to use 400 pound test in case we hooked a marlin, the tuna didn't care. Oh, so snap. big difference. 400 Over the pounds. last That's like sword 20 fishing. years. Yeah, yeah, it just, it was, we were pulling all artificials and three and 400 pound leader and we caught a lot more marlin back then because you could land him, you know, when you caught him. And we were using heavier reels. It's a pretty awesome fishery still, but it's just changed. It's, I can't explain how they've learned, but they have. <laughs> Fish are getting smarter. Yeah, they, are. Mm. they are. What is BD Outdoors? And if someone went to your site, what's it all about? Yeah, um, BD Outdoors is a, is an online, it's kind of like a saltwater magazine with a little bit of everything else, freshwater, hunting. It's all online. It started as the Bloody Dex Forum in San Diego. Uh, California and we still have a heavy Southern California influence but Florida's number two spattering of members all over Northeast and Gulf Coast Texas mm -hmm. Alaska so we have a wide array of information on there how to 
fishing tips from both coasts. We have lots of boat maintenance and boat handling. We cover any kind of new gadgets coming out, uh, recipes, a little bit of hunting. Ooh, recipes. Lots of recipes. I already saw some good ones on there that I'm going yeah, to try out on my channel. Shot. So it, it, it's good. We, we feed new content, and that's my job is to, is to manage and create and, and relay the information each day into BD Outdoors. We call it feeding the conveyor belt. Yeah, <laughs> I know how it is. You're always putting more content out. It's like, what can we do next? How about go on a helicopter and shoot a hog? <laughs> that's right. That's a good one. <laughs> What's your fishing like at home? What uh, What are your main species? You got the patchery. Well, we have the inshore fishing too, but I am not. I have not been doing too much. I pretty much my thing is either run to the patcheries, which we've been doing a lot lately because it's been windy. I don't like going offshore if it's more than three foot waves right. and then grunt snapper group are all on the patries yellowtail snapper apparently there's a lot of sailfish but i can't seem to catch one <laughs> we'll be practicing more yeah, with the sailfish yeah. offshore same stuff as here you got your my blackfin kingfish we got the wahoo running right now mm -hmm. that we high speed troll for some deep dropping once i can get my electric reel to work again there you go <laughs> I saw you had a stinger rig. You use those for the wahoo. Yeah, I actually got a whole box of my rigs here. I don't know if you use any of these rigs. Do you get pompano up here? We do, yeah. So yeah. I got pompano rigs. Oh, cool. uh, do you ever use these popper style rigs? When we go to Louisiana, that is the standard fare up there. They'll fish a uh, couple feet a liter and then yeah. a, a rubber jig. Yeah, and they just like it. And then, whip it real hard yeah. so it makes a popping sound. It, it draws them in because their water's so dirty that. Yeah. And their fish are very uh, aggressive. Yeah, the sea trout apparently go crazy yeah. when they hear that. Yeah, yeah um, those are nice. Then we got our offshore style rigs, like our kingfish teasers. Mm -hmm. You can drift it like a dead bait on there. Or nice. I anything. love the mylar. That's my favorite. Yeah. Whatever color, I love my pink, the black. We got it in red. Mm -hmm. You know, we got it in all sorts of colors. That's yeah, my favorite teaser flasher. See that thing from a mile away in yeah. clear water. Oh, yeah. yeah, we got our stinger tips, and then we got our stinger rigs. So that's just the tip. Sometimes I like to use just the tip, but then we have the your standard stinger rig. Mm -hmm. We nice. got a lot of rigs mm -hmm. in here. We live bait for kingfish here a lot. That's the mm -hmm. staple of our charter fleet, and this is exactly what they will use. Sometimes they'll have another, you know, a, a second treble. Yeah. Some guys use the single as well all right well i was digging through the box like a wild man <laughs> couldn't find the right rig so <laughs> we took some time we laid out how many we got here eight let's just kind of take a peek at some of these um pompano rig yeah the pompano are biting right now on the surf uh, it's fairly popular and that's exactly what they'll use they'll put uh sand fleas if they can get them is the mm -hmm. preferred bait but they can be pretty hard you know unpredictable whether yeah. you can get them and so fish bites is actually if you're familiar with that the little yeah. scented fabric thing they uh, are very popular and gulp as well shrimp of course is a staple but they do like the little foam bead and so they'll and, like gulp they'll just cut up like a piece of yeah artificial bait yeah it the doesn't eat that yeah wow it doesn't look not i mean but i mean that already it's like beads yeah. and flores you know what i mean but they eat it because that water is dirty and churning uh -huh. they're going by smell mostly they're shooting along through the surf and and they just quickly grab whatever little bit they find yeah. by a scent and some visual so that helps the flash helps them find it and uh, so yeah the surf fish are a little less picky than some others because it's so turbid in there then we got our poppers which we already went over yeah yeah those would be good and our uh slow drifting teasers live bait you can fish them with dead bait i'll put like a dead ballyhoo on there and we'll just drift it in the current right, right. fish will come by and eat it that's exactly what we will slow troll uh, spanish sardines or cigar minnows if you can't find live bait which mm -hmm. in the winter that's the staple is really to buy frozen cigar minnows and they spin and look horrible as far as what we think, you know, swim in a bait, but yeah. they eat the heck out of them. And you pull them So if they slow. spin like a little bit, it's okay? I, I, they sp Every one of them spins. Yeah. Like a helicopter. Like, if it was a ballyhoo, you'd be horrified. Mm -hmm. But it's standard procedure in a cigar minnow. Oh, that's good to know. You definitely need a, you know, a swivel of some sort in line because it's just like a spoon. Yep. And it's, These all come with a swivel. Yeah, that's perfect. You ever fish these heavy jigs? Yeah, um, we usually use that when we're cobia fishing. Um, whether you're jigging a wreck, deep jigging, I mean, you'll tip it. Some people put a live bait on it uh, or, or a plastic tail. 
mm -hmm. or you could tie hair to it, whichever you preferred, but you put a, a plastic grub or spinner tail or something like that. So you either you, you can either, when we sight fish along the beach for cobias, you like a heavier jig so you can reach way out, yeah. you know, ounce and a half, um, up to two ounce, and then uh, if you're jigging the wrecks, and that's kind of tends to be winter time, mm -hmm. then we use it for that. How do you well. jig a wreck? You just let it sink to the bottom and then? Yeah, and then hop it back up. That's the cobias like to, it to shoot up and then drop. Okay. Shoot up and drop. Dang, we'll have to do that. I heard the people started seeing the cobia around. Really, yeah. Uh, I mean, it piece. catches everything else too, right? Yeah. And the kudas, you're going to go buy a bunch because the kudas are going to chop them all. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's just part of it. Nice. Those are the lip candy jig heads. Yeah, those look good. good yeah, look in them. We have them in all sizes. We have them up to two ounces and then all the way down to half an ounce, one ounce. So they come in different sizes. That's perfect. Then we have like your standard snapper rig with the beads. Oh, uh, okay. Those yeah. come in different sizes too. Um, but my favorite is the freeliner rig, mm. which is just for like three and a half and feet. Like that. Yeah, yellowtail snapper. So, so the only snappers that we really get uh, coming up, because we're you know 90, 100 foot really when we're mm -hmm. on the reef, and we don't have coral reef, we have rock ledges. So we call it the reef. We're going to the reef, but it's really just a rock ledge. Might have a big spot, might have eight, ten foot of relief. Mm -hmm. and small spots you know a foot or two but it's the heart of the activity and holds the bait yeah so mangrove snappers you can get them chummed up to the mm -hmm. surface here some of the time and that's that's the main one that we freeline we don't really have yellow tails and we are seeing more muttons than normal but yeah. most of those are caught would be caught like with this rig with the sinker that's normally when we bottom fish it's you got to go down to the bottom yeah, so, so the snapper rig, you know, you can get in with heavy weight right, or right. very lightweight. How deep a water can you chum up mangrove snapper to the top? I've done it in 130 foot. Wow. It's not the norm. Yeah. It takes, it takes some, you know, sitting there. Yeah. And just some days they're willing to come up. I don't know wow. if it's because the current's lighter. Or... And how many bags of chum do you have out when you're doing that? Uh, well, we're like cutting chunks. Oh, So chunking. we'll hang a chum bag sometimes. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there a while. But we're also cutting chunks that actually, like sink down and help mm -hmm. bring them up yeah. okay but it, it's a balance between getting them full and getting them up right yeah. if you throw too many of course they're eating the freebies and sometimes they that's when we have to go stealthy when we get mangroves up in the water they're super smart because we're talking you know four to ten pounders they're not the little ones Our most of ours are you know if you catch a two pounder that's a little one but you're not yeah. going to catch a boatload you're just but they're very wary, so that's when we have to use fluorocarbon and light leaders like that. Yeah, and yeah, this is all because they're up in the sunshine and the water's cleaner. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, that's why we we use fluorocarbon for everything. Cause man, those fish in the keys. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. Are so sneaky, especially like our yellowtail jigs. Would you you ever use yellowtail jigs up in this way? No, these little weighted not hooks? really. I mean, yeah. you could if you were freelining for smaller mangroves. Yeah, that would work because you could tuck that up in a, like a chunk of sardine and hide the weight. So in that respect, it would be good. You don't get many yellowtail snapper up no, here. No, very rarely. Yeah, I think when I lived in Fort Pierce, I never caught any. Fort Lauderdale, I've caught them. Mm -hmm. And then south of there, and then you get to the Keys and they ball up in right, freaking right. huge schools. Yeah, they tend to be more coral reefs. So in <laughs> Lauderdale, you're back to having an actual coral. Mm -hmm. Fort Pierce, you still don't really have true coral yeah. reef yet. And, uh, it's definitely a transition between about Fort Pierce, Stewart. Things become more south of there. Jupiter is kind of the yeah, where it becomes tropical. Where it type starts fishing. start to go into paradise. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, our knocker rig. This is our standard knocker rig. A circle hook to a, a weight that yeah. can just free line. That's that's exactly that's our normal standard bottom fishing rig. It's yeah, that's my depending favorite. Depending on the I current, think. you know, um, we are required now to use circle hooks with bait when we're bottom fishing so mm -hmm. that's good for that a lot of rigs if you ever have a rig design that you like or want to use send it my way and i can try to get it into okay. production yeah that'd be great <laughs> make your own bd outdoors rig <laughs> there you go yeah we're, we're also we're starting to make artificials and we got a bunch of trolling rigs in the making okay but that won't be for another probably two or three months right but it's happening check out bdoutdoors.com and uh it was a good chat yeah it was i think, uh, I think we're gonna have to get on a fishing trip next time we I'm definitely up here. we need to go break this thing in yeah, yeah.
So the next time you see us together, we're going to be on this boat right here <laughs> catching some Using fish. Using that rig. Oh, yeah. Perfect. I think that sounds like a plan. Awesome.